Are you trapped? Are you trapped? I need to put a handle on this door. <laughs> There's no handle on the inside. Don't want to hit the limbo. Okay, so what am I doing with this car in the garage next to the twin turbo Lambo? Why in the world do I have something that looks like a piece of shit in the garage? What am I doing with this car? What are my plans? Well, believe it or not, this car has a very specific purpose. I bought it for a reason, and I'm gonna tell you why in this video. It's gonna be a fun project. So first, let me tell you a little bit about the car my plans for it, and then I'm gonna tell you why I bought it. First of all, it's a 1979 Chevrolet Monte Carlo. So let me switch it around. It's easier for me just to walk around uh, with the camera pointed at the car. So it's a 1979 Chevy Monte Carlo, like I said, but it's very different from a, fat, a stock Chevy Monte Carlo from back in the day. Uh, it's actually set up for circle track racing. If you could look at the front of the car, I'm not sure if you'll be able to tell, but it's leaned to the driver's side a little bit. Um, that's accomplished with cutting the sway bar and link down there. And I believe the springs are also cut. Uh, the motor is a stock car motor. It's a built Chevy small block 350 that's been bored over to a 355. It's got heads, cam, uh, two barrel carburetor, uh, obviously headers, and it's got this cool little side exit NASCAR style exhaust. I think it's called like the NASCAR or like boom tube or something. But I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys. Everything about this car is completely new to me. This is the first carbureted vehicle that I've ever owned. It's the first carbureted vehicle that I'm ever going to work on or that I've ever worked on before. And so it's gonna be a learning experience for me and uh, it's gonna be a series over this winter on the YouTube channel, me basically working on this car and improving it on what it currently is. Let's take a look at the interior of the car. <laughs> Completely gutted interior, don't mind the, the trash back there, that's all coming out. That's actually the original bench seat that used to be up front here. And you see it's been replaced with just a single race seat. I'm actually gonna add another race seat on the passenger side, I'll tell you why in a minute. And you can see the interior is all cracked up. And it really, honestly, looks like a piece of shit inside. But there's a reason for all this, trust me. Quickly walk around the car, you can see that we're sitting on steel uh, racing wheels. We've got Nitto drag radials all the way around. This one needs to be replaced because of an incident that happened at the racetrack. I'll tell you why in a second. But this is the car. So why did I buy this thing? What is the purpose? Okay, so here's why I bought it. Here in Maine, there's a local racetrack called Beechridge Motor Speedway. I've been going there since I was a little kid. You know, for as far back as I can remember, my mom would always bring me and my brothers and sisters. And three times out of the year, they had an event called the Day of Destruction. You can actually go look this up on their website. And one of the events uh, is actually where you can bring, regular people can bring their street cars and race around the track. It's called the Spectator Drags. And for years I would go to this as a spectator and I, you know, I just never entered it. I didn't have a car to race in it until this year. So this year I actually bought a car for the intention on racing it at the day of destruction. Now the first car I bought was a 91 or 92 Ford Taurus SHO. That did okay, believe it or not. Wait a minute, they didn't even stop the hoodies. I bought, bought, bought. No, come on. All right, side by side in the turn two. Oh, Fender, Fender, that's what we're talking about. IndyCar racing right there. Oh, where did that tourist go? Bring it home now. You're going to hang on. It's important to finish first, but first you must finish, and he's going to do it. Yeah. But I wasn't happy with the front wheel drive, huge Bodie sedan, so I sold that soon after. Uh, after that, I bought a 95 Pontiac Trans Am. Um, did a little bit of work to that. That actually went pretty good. I put uh, 410 gears in it. Uh, we put nitrous to it, although the nitrous wasn't working when I sold it. I uh, did a bunch of other things to that. That actually went pretty good.
and in the last day destruction race that I took it to, I ended up getting in like uh, third or fourth place, I can't remember. I'm gonna actually put some footage here on the screen of these races because there's a YouTube channel that goes to these events and they do some really good job filming the events. It's called Carbon Video. So go subscribe to them if you're interested in this kind of thing. Um, so this should be some footage of me racing the Trans Am. Bum, 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 bum. And you're off! Outside groove here. He's not comfortable in his body. That too. On the outside groove. Lights on, nobody's home. What, what, what? It did pretty good. I was really impressed with it. The first time around, it did shitty uh, because of the long, tall stock gearing. When I put the 410 gears in it, it did really good, and I got, uh, I think I tied for third place. Well, after the last race, I found out that one of the cars that always wins on these day of destruction race events was for sale. This particular car right here, again, I'm gonna put some footage on the screen. This car, uh, it looks like an absolute piece of shit, but it was winning pretty much every day of destruction race this year. the car for sale. Actually, my brother Kyle found out that the car was for sale on Craigslist like a few days after the last day of destruction event. I called and I, I drove down there and bought it the very next day. Or I believe it was the very next day. I paid $2,500 for the car and I'm happy with it. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a little bit of work to it this winter, give it its own unique appearance, and we're going to bring it back to the day of destruction races next year. So we're gonna race at, we're gonna try to race all three Day of Destruction events at Beach Ridge Motor Speedway, okay? You can go look on their website and see when they are if you wanna come watch. Um, there's also Oxford Plains Speedway, which is about an hour and a half for me. They also have like their own type of spectator drags. They have four events every summer, so we're gonna try to hit all of those too. So we've potentially got four, five, six, seven, maybe eight, Day of Destruction spectator race events that we're gonna be taking this car to. And that's the reason why I bought this car. I've had more fun on these little Day of Destruction spectator race events than really honestly than I've ever had in the Lambo. The Lambo is fun, I love it, but you know, racing something around a circle track and just having fun is, it's fun. It's, it's why I like cars to begin with. And uh, so that's what we're gonna be doing this winter. Now let me talk about what my plans are. All right, first of all, I, I still want it to look like a piece of shit, all right? In fact, the old owner of this car, he named the car the piece of shit. He actually built it, He's a, he actually races at one of those racetracks I just told you, and, um, and I'm told, I don't know how accurate it is, but I'm told this engine is out of one of their stock cars. So my goal is to, first of all, go through the entire car, make sure that it's mechanically sound. I'm gonna go through the motor, you know, check the compression and just go through everything and replace anything that needs replacing. Now keep in mind, this is gonna be my first time working on a carbureted engine. So I'm gonna be learning through this whole process. Now I've already went ahead and I bought a bunch of like uh, engine building DVDs on the Chevy Small Block 350. I've been doing a lot of reading, learning about how this engine works. But when we actually dig into it this winter, that's gonna be the true test. So I'm gonna go through the whole car, make sure it's mechanically sound, okay? I don't have to do anything to the engine because it's built pretty good. I mean, it should be putting out around 400 horsepower or so, I would think. Um, the modifications that are done to it, I'm gonna tell you in a minute. So I'm gonna go through the maintenance wise, make sure it's running good. Uh, I'm gonna check all the suspension parts, make sure that's all sound. And I'm gonna fix anything that's rusted, broken, just to make sure that it is safe. After that, I'm gonna move to the interior, okay? I'm gonna replace that b and I don't know if you call that like a slap shifter or what. I'm gonna replace that with a ratchet shifter because right now it's got an automatic transmission in it. It's got a turbo 350 transmission and it's got a manual valve body on it. So you actually have to shift it manually. Well, right now, first gear is all the way down. Second is up, third is 
you know, the thirds notch up. Right now, it's very hard to shift from like first to second without pushing all the way past second and going into third. So I'm gonna be replacing that with something called the B&M, I think it's called the Pro Ratchet Shifter. I'm gonna be putting that in. I'm gonna be cleaning out the entire interior, getting all this trash out of here and, you know, vacuuming it and just, you know, just get all the, there's like screws and rivets and I don't know, wrappers and everything in here. Uh, the, the dash even has some like carpet covering over it and I'm just gonna rip that off. I don't need that in there. I'm gonna put a rear view mirror up in the car and uh, I may put a bigger steering wheel on it, I'm not sure. I'm gonna put another one of these Kirky race seats on the passenger side because we actually drive this, we actually drive to the Day of Destruction events. We don't trailer there, we drive because one of the rules is the car has to be street legal. So we're not gonna be trailering it, we're gonna be driving there. And of course, Emily is gonna be sitting in the passenger seat as we go to these events. This door here is actually missing a handle so you can't actually get out unless you roll down the window and reach out or someone let you out. So that's my plans for the interior. Nothing really big at all. I'm gonna keep it gutted, obviously. No need to put an interior in it. Uh, I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna put new side view mirrors on it. They're all broken off. You can see on the other side, there's not one over there. Now this car has built up quite the reputation at these local spectator race events. So a lot of people ended up hating the car because it looks like an absolute piece of shit, but it was beating everybody. And you can actually see right here, this dent right here and the flat tire was actually caused by the, the old owner of this car actually got into an accident with uh, another contender on the spectator race where this car basically spun out another car, you know, or this, this, the other car spun him out, I can't remember. And I don't even know who was at fault, but they spun out and there was like some, you know, some disagreements between whose fault that was. I'm not going to get into it, but this car kind of has a reputation. So I kind of want to rebrand re it a little bit. I want to do a different paint scheme uh, and I'm going to put up a pole when that time comes. But here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking of either going with like a tan colored primer and going with that, uh, I think it was Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift where they have um, the opening scene, the guys racing the, the Dodge Viper through the housing development. And it's like, an, it's like a different generation Monte Carlo, but I'm thinking about going with that color scheme, or I may do the whole car, the same color scheme as the Blurple Yamaha FZ09 motorcycles, where the entire car is like silver primer and then the wheels are like bright Blurple, which is like a, a mixture of purple and blue. Just something totally ridiculous. Um, again, I'm not restoring this to, to mint condition or anything. It's a race car. I just want it to look unique. So when people see it, they know what it is. Now the car sounds absolutely badass. You heard it in the video when I pulled it up on the lift. I'm not gonna start it again because it's kind of a bitch to start, to be honest. But let me go ahead and just go through the build list here with you guys. I've got it on my cell phone here. And I'm just gonna go through the list of things that is done to it. So the engine is a, is a board over Chevy 350 to a 355, um, has a high volume oil pump, dished pistons. Um, so this engine's actually set up for superchargers. So we may go for its induction down the road, I'm not sure. Uh, has timing gears in it with 2.02 angle plug ported heads with a .500 lift crower cam steel roller rockers, aluminum Victor high-rise intake, uh, Holly 500 carburetor, uh, Moroso oil pan, ceramic coated headers, the transmission is built and has a shift kit and a torque converter and it has 373 gears. Oh, I'm also gonna put 410 gears in it. So I was in love with the 410 gears from the Firebird, so we're gonna do that. The car is a straight pipe exhaust, as you can see, basically it just goes from the headers straight down and it exits down there on the side. Uh, b and shifter, uh, big sway bar, solid motor mounts, and a couple other things. Oh, it has Bilstein suspension all the way around. So it, it's set up for racing. It's basically a race car. So I'm gonna actually register this car as an antique so I can drive it on the road. No, I don't plan on daily driving this car, but I still do wanna be able to drive it on the road. I wanna be able to drive it to the racetrack. Hey, I may even take it to the drag strip too, 
but uh, it's going to be a fun project. So the name of this car is actually the Bruiser. The Bruiser because it's, hey, it looks like a piece of shit. It's got a reputation for, you know, winning races and that's just, I think that name just fits it well. So the, I'm naming this project uh, the Bruiser Monte Carlo race car project. So there's going to be a playlist here on my channel. Whenever we do a new video, it's going to be added to that playlist. So if you're into this type of thing, make sure that you subscribe, come back, and basically watch me work on this thing all winter. And, uh, you know, just improve on what is currently here. We're going to take it to some races next year, and that's going to be fun. So I'm excited about this. I hope you are too. If you have any suggestions for me, if you're watching and, you know, you know a lot about, you know, the, the Chevy Small Block 350, if you know anything that I can do to make this thing faster without doing anything crazy. I don't want to go spend like 20 grand on this or 10 grand. I want to keep this a budget build because it's just a backyard race car. You know, I don't want to put a bunch of money into it. But if you have any recommendations for me on things I could do to make this even better than what it currently is, let me know. I would love to hear your thoughts. Um, like I said, this is completely new to me. It's going to be a learning experience and I welcome your suggestion in the comments. So here we go, this is my new car, the uh, Bruiser Monte Carlo race car. If you like this type of shit, go ahead and press the like button, subscribe if you're new here, and of course check out my other videos. We do a lot of Lamborghini videos, um, all kinds of stuff like that. So I'll talk to you soon, bye.